How did it feel to have that first episode kind of done with now? It, it feels great because we, we, we basically changed the entire industry um, before we even had one minute of national TV time. And now that we have a show under our belts that was very successful, uh, both uh, in the ring as a program and of course with the, with the ratings and the demographics and all that sort of stuff, I think now it's shut a lot of people up and it's excited a lot more people. Maybe some people that were kind of on the fence about AEW are now completely like, wow, that was really cool, I wanna check it out. And I think that we've really appealed to a segment of the fan base that might have left wrestling for a while. And now, they're kind of returning uh, because we're giving them something different, a little bit of a uh, of an option, and I think that's one of the reasons why AEW has such a buzz and why we've become basically the coolest company in the world is because it's something different and it's beginning in front of your very eyes and growing in front of your very eyes. The newer talent that I think people had some concerns about, or maybe were kind of like, I don't know if this person, uh, particularly I'll say Sammy Guevara, even though. You know, he he did, he did some dirty business to my husband on the way out there. Um, he uh, really just rose to the occasion. So many people at Riho, uh, they the talent came up. They showed up. They showed you what they could do, and um, that was just so inspirational to see. But also it gives me so much hope moving into what I know is happening next that people are going to continue to be super hooked because yeah, I feel like it was hard to not connect with someone on that show. Can you talk a little bit more about how AEW is going to distinguish itself from its competitors? I think one of the, because I, you know, I, I, you're talking to somebody that worked for the WWE for 19 years. It's, it's an amazing company. It's worldwide. Uh, it's, it's the standard for, for what pro wrestling is, but there's a certain style that they have. Uh, it's very much an overly written show, and AEW is not. AEW allows the performers to perform, allows the artists to be to be artists. And I think, um, especially for a guy like myself, like you know, if I'm going to be in a Netflix show and I'm playing George Swanson, and you give me a script, that's great. I can create the George Swanson character that's written for me. Nobody can write for Chris Jericho like Chris Jericho can. It's my character, and I can't write for Jungle Boy or I can't write for Awesome Kong or anything like that. We are allowing the, the, the performers to be creative, and either you're going to sink or you swim. And if you swim, you're going to be very successful when you have an organic character that gets over with the audience because of what you're doing with it. To me, um, our, our artists, our talent, our artists, our wrestlers, our collaborators with uh, the heads, the powers that be, and uh, me as an artist, I feel heard when I come to the powers that be over at AEW, uh, and they are open to let me be the artist that I am. And when you feel heard, it brings joy to to your life because you're, you're creating the art that you want. Three, four days prior to being in Washington, D.C., uh, to the kickoff of Dynamite, I, I did my last official independent booking. Um, and I definitely looked at that as like a turning point, like a, a new chapter, if you will, maybe even a new volume. Um, you know, and, and, and from, here on, from here on out with AEW, the experiences are going to be bigger and bolder, and I'm, I'm going to try to drink it all in and grow as a performer, obviously, grow as a, as a person. Um, th there's so much in every aspect, every little nook, cranny, and corner to learn. And me personally, that's what I'm hoping to do. I think any time that wrestling is on TV or wrestling gets hot, no matter what company it is, it inspires guys to get in the business. I know it did for me. I think what this does, not just for, for, for the wrestlers, but for the fans as well, this is the first time you've ever been able to see a major company starting uh, from scratch. You know, if you were a WWE fan that started in the 40s, if you're a WCW fan via NWA started in the 20s, there's been small companies that started in bingo halls and, and you know, sports bars, but our very first show was in front of 14,000 people at a sold out arena on the TNT network that drew one and a half million people. That's something cool. I remember when Metallica first came out, I got into them in 1985. As the band grew and got bigger, I took great pride in that because they're my band. Uh, I, I was there from the start. And you, you take some, some ownership in that. And I think that's one thing that's cool about, about our fans is they're taking ownership in the fact that we can see this company build and grow and we've never had the opportunity to do that before. So there's a lot of brand loyalty for us as a result. We just need to stay on, on our track, um, not be distracted by anything else that's going on and just stay headstrong and continue to trust uh, our focus. 
Um, that's what we've done up until this point. Uh, a lot of our focus is on our fans and uh, being listeners and, and paying attention to what it is that they like and what they're seeing that they're wanting more of. And um, I think in, in wrestling, sometimes people want to, you know, have a straight and narrow path and they never want to deviate. We're welcome to deviating when it comes to the fan base. If there's something that they're just really feeling and it means we have to change course for a bit, we're going to do that. So I think where I was a year ago, I would not have expected this. So it, <laughs> it, I'm, I'm really kind of excited to see. I, the thing I can tell is things are changing. Um, I knew that from day one. Things are different. I've been saying this all day, but I get to ride to the ring on a dinosaur every week. <laughs> and that yeah. is, is the thing that in other places and then other times would never fly. Yeah. But we're doing that on national TV in arenas with 15,000 people. And people love it. Yeah. And it's cool. And we do get to do that. And she does get to wrestle. It, we get to do what we want to do and be different. Wrestling is changing. And it's up to us to decide what we want to put forward and what people want to see and people want to do. And there there, there are rules, but there are no rules, you know? It, it, it has to evolve, we all do. We have to move forward and create new things. So in a year from now, I don't need, who knows where we go. How are you reflecting on your personal growth? And this point in your life is, is really like a turning point, a bookmark for you. Um, now how are you personally reflecting on your personal growth as an, uh, as an artist and as a person? Yeah, really, uh... I really do feel like an entirely different person, like not not just in the ring, not just as character, obviously, but uh, really, like I just feel like a better person. I just feel like myself again. I just feel like I didn't like the person that I was becoming because just the, uh, just, there's a lot of just negativity around that whole situation. Like I didn't really realize how miserable I was for as long as I was until it was over. Because you're, you're, you're at the top, because I would always be like, I'd never want to be a complainer or not be like grateful because I'm like, well, I got, I came into this with nothing. When I drove, I drove to Florida with nothing but like my beater car and like whatever cash I had in my pocket and like my wrestling bag. I, I literally had nothing when I moved down to Tampa, I drove from Philly to Tampa. And, uh, and that was the gamble. So I was like, all right, let's see if this WWE thing works out. A lot of people, uh, Funnily enough, didn't think I had even a shot at making it because they're like, well, if he can't bleed and swear and stab everybody, then he's never going to make it in WWE. <laughs> Funnily enough, I became almost too child friendly. Uh, so I succeeded too much. <laughs> but, you know, the WWE uh, gamble, not that I had anything to gamble, but uh, uh, it worked out, you know. I went down there with nothing and I left with literally everything. Uh, so I'd be like thinking to myself, like, you know, I have the most beautiful wife in the world who I love. This is the greatest person in the world. Uh, I got a perfect house. I got my dogs that I love. I got my truck. I'm like, I don't, I got everything I need. And I'm at the top of the end. I have these fans. And, you know, I'm like, and so I'd be like, I don't want to complain. So it's just, I kind of ignored that anything was wrong. And what was wrong was I hated my freaking job. But I didn't, you know, I just, I'd be like, oh, well, at least I'm not working in, like, a factory somewhere, you know? So I always try to, like, look at it. Uh, I don't think I realized how miserable I was because I kept trying to put a positive spin on it because I wanted to be, like, grateful to the universe. like, And, you know, you feel like a responsibility to, like, fans and stuff and, like, uh, you know, make-a-wish programs and things like that, you know? Uh, so you don't want to just bitch about, like, like you're bad creative when there's people who have to work 12 hours in a factory and stuff like that so uh, but now it's like I feel like I'm I feel like I literally was asleep for like years you know uh, this, mo this moment it, it's something that we've all recognized but it also inspired um, a great conversation you know this, this, this situation happened in your life and all at the same time AEW bubbling um, it, I think it inspired wrestling culture in general um, like wrestling, independent wrestling shows, like they've, we've, they've talked a lot about it now, at least this AEW conversation. Um, so how are you reflecting on that, on like uh, on adding fuel to like an even bigger picture? Uh, for me, my situation was just like right place, right time. Like uh, when I was leaving WWE, I didn't even, nothing, everything, the AEW thing wasn't even a thing yet, you know. Uh, it just literally happened at the 
exact same time. It was like I didn't even, like I didn't even find AEW. AEW found me. It was like we just our paths just converged at the exact same time. So uh, that was really fortunate. But uh, I think it's cool. It's it's coolest for the fans. And it, well, it's good for everybody right now. Just this is the most exciting time. Uh, to be a wrestler, to be a wrestling fan, that since I've been in the business, this is the most exciting time for the wrestling business probably since I was 12, yeah. like 96, 97, so uh, 98, you know, and uh, back then, you know, ECW was filling up buildings, so was WCW, so was uh, WWE, so um, I think right now everybody's just, I, th- I think everybody's going to start doing better than they're doing right now, you know, was, um, and, and, you know, the rep, you're seeing wrestlers, who are getting more money from WWE, you know, just because they're trying to lock everybody down, which is great. It should have been like that all along. You know? Uh, you're seeing, you know, just the... I think I think they're going to start reducing their schedule, too. It's gonna, You know, which is good, because their schedule's stupid. Makes no sense. Uh, so you're gonna, I think you're going to see a better quality of life for guys, you know, in the competition, so to speak, just... Because of the existence of AEW, I mean, you're, there's guys in Japan that are getting ra- that I know that are getting raises that are under contract that aren't even coming, don't even want to come here, but just to, just as like a sign of good faith. So there's literally the entire industry all over the world is like benefiting from uh, the fact that now there's like a viable alternative. And once we like hit 10 o'clock and we got two hours in the can the other night and we were like, we did it, high five there, and now we got the ratings out. There is a viable alternative, you know what I mean? Like, this is real. This actually happened. Like, I'm sure there are a lot of people that are going to keep wanting to wake up from the nightmare and, like, this isn't really real. But, like, oh, this is happening. This is 100% real. And uh, it's it's great for everybody. And it's great, great most, and I don't say this to try to, like, do some corporate speak like that pa- <laughs> passive-aggressive-ass WWE statement the other day. But it is <laughs> ultimately the fans benefit, you know, because they get to see the, these guys who are, like, all across the board or more inspired or, or uh, from like the, from the indies getting hyped up to like all across the board just everybody's more passionate and more excited and like it's the other night I was watching Raw like with my wife the other night and was like I was like this is fun because we were like watching them react like oh now they got now they brought Pyro back and like now they're bringing they brought in Hogan and just watching them try to like make moves is like it's fun. It's exciting. It, like the fan part of me is like, this is so much fun. Is there a challenge with all these new names that like unrecognizable names in the wrestling industry that you know to the casual fans to, to give them to the forefront? Like we, there is, but here's yeah. the difference for us. Like we have a lot of star power. If you look at what happened at the end of our very first show, who was out there? Jericho. We know him. Moxley. We know him. Cody Rhodes. Well, we haven't seen him for a while, but we know that name. Dustin Rhodes. We know him. Uh, 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 Jake Hager. Well, jeez. We haven't seen him in a while. Now he's an undefeated MMA fighter and he's back. Um, that's star power. Then, as a result, people know these guys and then they get to see Nick Jackson, Matt Jackson, Kenny Omega, Sammy Guevara, uh, Santana, Ortiz. We build stars by putting them with stars. That's how you get people over. If you just have a bunch of names that nobody's heard, it's hard to get momentum. For us, we have the bridge, as you mentioned, to bring people that haven't seen AEW Who's on AEW? Jericho. Well, we like him. Let's watch it. And then you watch Jericho on AEW and see, oh my gosh, who are the Young Bucks? These guys are great. This Kenny Omega is awesome. And Hangman Page and MJF. That's how it works. So we have a real great balance, like a great football team or a great hockey team of rookies, guys in their prime, and a selection, a very select selection of seasoned vets who are still working at the top level, uh, helping guys with the experience. Humor is an important part of your character for years. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. And that was a good part of the WWE in that golden era, the Ted DiBiase, the Sergeant yeah, Slaughter's. Yeah. Is that an area that you think AEW will concentrate, as opposed you know, to the ECW, the hard action, trying to bring in, I think well, it brings the marginal person. I think, you know, the original mindset for AEW is to be a, I don't know is, is to be more of a, of a sports-oriented show. But listen, if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck, it's a duck. It's pro wrestling, and especially when I'm in the ring. Um, yeah, there's a serious side, uh, but there's also a, a comedic side. That's what connects with the audience, and exactly. that's the most important thing about wrestling. And if you look at the guys in our company that people might not be familiar with, the Young Bucks are hilarious. Kenny Omega is very uniquely quirky, funny. Uh, there's a lot of humorous guys in the company who also understand when you turn the humor off and turn the, the seriousness on. 
Um, so, I mean, the other day I was in the ring and it was during a TV break, but not everywhere. Some people were watching it live uh, on, on different streaming services and stuff, and we were beating somebody up. And I've been doing this for 29 years, and I look over and I see a, a wiener in the ring, like a hot dog. Someone threw a hot dog in the ring, and I was like, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, we were beating up the baby face. Hold on. Who threw this wiener in the ring? What is this? It's funny, but how I, you can't just kick a hot dog out of the ring. And I'm talking a, a wiener, like like you took it out of the fridge. It wasn't even cooked. I don't know where this came from. But that's funny stuff, right? So it's very good. you have to be able to play on that sort of thing and then take the crowd back into the seriousness of the match as well. That's the beauty of wrestling, and that's the beauty of AEW. We have the freedom to do that, to go with the flow and uh, take advantage of the opportunities that come about while you're in the middle of, 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 of the match. So what do you feel is the best way to kind of reach disillusioned fans who have kind of walked away from wrestling? I think there's a buzz about it, and word of mouth is very important. And two, now, once you see the show, we don't have to explain it anymore. Now people know, okay, we saw the first AEW Dynamite. It was amazing. you got to see this show. Really? What is it? It's this new company. Jericho's there. Moxie's there. You know, Dustin Rhodes is there. Who else is there? A bunch of guys that we've never heard of before. But, man, they're amazing. These are guys that have honed their craft for a dozen years around the world that are now getting a chance to show it in front of a national audience. So I think there's a different feel to us. It's fresh with a bunch of guys you've never heard of before that are fucking amazing. And that's the secret, you know, it really is. You have to have fresh, exciting, uh, good talent on top. And we have that. It is so fresh, like I said, that they're basically unwrapped when it comes to, to national TV.